what is up everybody welcome to another episode of commercial roofing radio we got two guests in the house today for the first time ever we got two guests we got the boys of roper roofing and solar we got mr brent roper hello and brandon uh denardo gents how are we doing Doing well. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for having us out. Yeah. We got this awkward setup. We really got one mic. So they're going to do their best to kind of pass it off here and, and there. But I'll do a quick intro because these guys, you know, they're, they're very humble gentlemen. So I'll, I'll kind of, you know, set the tone here. So Brent, this is, he's a Georgia Bulldog over here. So he, he's still enjoying that national championship that they just got. Two. We got two Georgia Bulldogs. <laughs> so they're both enjoying a national championship right now. So. Yes, sir. Graduated from University of Georgia, second generation contractor, worked with his dad and uh, his roofing company. You know, he tried to get out of it and kept coming back to roofing. He was even on the dark side for a little bit, right? Weren't you an insurance adjuster for a little bit or what? Uh, I did a little training. A little did, training. I did a little, a little bit on that side for a week or two just yeah. to see what's going on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. you did that. He's a, a golf pro. So my, my business partner, <laughs> uh, Chris Pendergast, met him at the C3 uh, group charity event here in Denver. Um, unbelievable golfer. So unbelievable. if you guys ever, par, yeah. par golfer, totally. uh, his drive is unbelievable. I think he hit like 350, 375 in the drive. Unbelievable. Uh, enjoys ripping the slopes from his place in Winter Park, you yes, know? Sir. So he's getting after it. You know, this is his wingman right here. This sounds like this is his, his better half and, and the guy that, that truly knows what's going on, right? Yeah, yeah. You can't argue with that. I, yeah. I, I would say I'm the brains of the operation. The brains sure. beyond the operation. That's what I was thinking too. So how did so how did you guys connect? What's what's your guys' background? Uh, I've known Brent for about 20 years. Uh, so we met in undergrad at the University of Georgia. Um, and when I moved out to Colorado, I was looking for work, and then Brent offered me a position. And mm -hmm. kind did of you follow Brent out here? Then you saw Brent out yeah, here. You're like, I, I got from my buddy. I miss Brent. Or uh, what was the deal? I, I followed my wife out here. Actually. Oh, <laughs> the woman then. Yeah. So she, so she, she wanted to move out here, or what was the deal there? Yeah, she's she's a Colorado native. Okay, um, right on. And we were living in in Georgia at the time, and wanted to be closer to uh, relatives. So we moved moved to Denver area, and I was I was in the search of a new career path and Brent said that we get a lot of hail here and that I should take up roofing and uh have, and since then yeah no hail since <laughs> haven't seen a hailstorm since dude but oh. we've been making it work yeah you guys make well and and that's why I want, you know I want to really talk about today is hey the future's bright and solar and I feel like you guys are doing a great job with that so uh, you know we'll talk about some stuff first off you know it's weird times in Denver, right? Obviously there's this stuff going on all over the country, but with the lack of hail, it's an interesting situation. So I want you to take this one here too, Brent, is, you know, when you saw lack of hail, lack of hail, lack of hail, I saw some people go, go retail, try retail. Did you guys, did you guys try the retail? Was it like, Hey, let's lean heavier into solar. What was kind of the mindset originally? Yeah. I think we've always just tried to, you know, a lot, a lot of roofers here have been dependent on the weather and that's, um, that's hard. I mean, you know, for, for, we started in 2015 and I want to say the first five years, there was just three nice hailstorms pretty much every year. And then yeah. it just seemed to have stopped. And, uh, so we were able to grow and establish ourselves. And I, I keep saying, you know, we're building a foundation and we're, we're reinvesting into the company and we're, you know, we've got a great sales yep. team and those guys are all just solid. Um, but we're, yeah, we're, we're waiting on a storm, but we don't want to be totally dependent on that. So, so we, you know, we saw solar is, you know, it's happening and, uh, there's a lot more opportunity in the solar market. Um, a lot more roofs if you drive around that need solar more than they need shingles, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, so yeah, we, we kind of stuck our toe in that game and, um, that's where Brad really came into play. He's, he's a, a bright guy. Um, are you guys selling retail though? Are you guys trying to sell retail roofs or is that kind of, if yeah, it happens, yeah, it we, happens? Sell, we sell a decent amount of retail roofs. Yeah. I'd say probably 50%. The last no kidding. Few years. Really? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but you know, just trying to offer other services too. Like we were just talking about building mm -hmm. fences, building decks, doing siding, doing windows. I mean, none of that is, you know, what we really focus on, but it's a way to just to keep, you know, keep the doors open and, uh, mm -hmm. you know, but uh, solar, you know, it's, it's intriguing. I mean, it's fun. I think Brad, um, we've got a, another girl in the office, Hillary, mm -hmm. who's real bright and they've sort of taken the solar game and run with it. And, um, you know, I'd say in the last week, we've probably got more interest from solar leads 
then we have roofing, which is exciting. That is know? exciting. Yeah. Um, so then what about the commercial side of things? I mean, that's another weird spot with materials and stuff like that. So how have you been handling that? Yeah, we, uh, we had some nice commercial contracts signed start of last year and, um, yeah, we, we've had to really just tap into every vendor. Uh, yeah. Duralast has been, yeah. you know, we, our boy, we, John deal, right. We, we met Mr. Deal through yeah. you guys. And that was a, uh, a, a huge, huge, um, meeting for us just to get accepted into their program. And, yeah. um, you know, cause for a while there, they were the only ones that had screws or, you know, we could only find insulation here and, you know, uh, dense deck there or whatever. So just trying to piece these commercial jobs together, but we yeah. made it work. I mean, it hasn't been easy, you know, but, um, but yeah, we, we're making it happen. Mm -hmm. So, and then leaned into the solar, That's it. but you were leaning into the solar before this, weren't you kind of? Yes. Because yeah. I mean, it yeah, seemed yeah. like you were always yep. about it even before the situation happened. Yeah. I mean, even when Tesla came yeah. out with their roof, you know, however many years ago that was, as soon as I saw it, I was thinking, crap, how's this going to affect all of us old school shingle roofers? You right. know, are we going to get pushed out of the market? You know, it was, it's like looking at all these gas vehicles in a few years, everyone's going to be driving electrical right. vehicles, you know? And so just trying to plan ahead, trying to get in before yeah. it's too late, you know? And I, I think we were able to hop in at a pretty decent time and you're starting to see a lot of other roofing companies do the same thing, you know? And I, I just think, uh, yeah, I think it's, hopefully it's going to work out for, for everyone. Yeah. What about the Tesla situation? What so how, how does their program exactly work with, with Tesla on the solar side? I, I mean, I've seen roofs installed. Do you know, do you want to take that yeah, one too, Brad, maybe? Yeah. So, uh, um, get comfortable too. I know it's kind of an awkward situation yeah. here, man. So, um, you know, Tesla, you a Tesla's, bit closer you can. Tesla's Sorry, got buddy. a, um, you know, it's a pain, you know, Tesla's got a, a strong, um, market share in, in the solar industry. Oh yeah. Um, I think where we're finding our ability to compete is, is because are they installing it themselves? Does that work? Is it certified? So they have their own installers. They also have partnership program where you can onboard to become a Tesla uh, preferred vendor where okay, essentially, gotcha. um, you can install their product for them. It's like uh, a Tesla lead. They give it to you type thing. Exactly. And install, yeah. Um, and we're, we, we've just been accepted into their program. Uh, um, so, you did? Yeah. Oh, right on. That's sick. So we're kind of trying to to navigate that and see what that's going to look like and what kind of business that's going to lead to. I think here in the Colorado market, they're, it's, it's kind of saturated already. Mm -hmm. um, I think in Austin, we might have some more opportunity to kind of grow and build and leverage that relationship um, to, you know, to further build and to, 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 to drive business when there's not hail on things like that mm -hmm. to diversify. But I think from a business standpoint, kind of where we're finding, you know, whereas Tesla's able to sell at a price per watt a lot cheaper than we are, um, they're buying in bulk, right? They're, um, they have really, really cheap labor. They're able to sell really, really cheap. Um, we're not really able to compete on price with big companies like that. Mm -hmm. And when we go into a solar deal, kind of where we're selling ourselves or differentiate ourselves is, is the fact that we are a small company. Yeah. If, if, if there's an issue, you know, you can reach me on my cell phone, you know, it's, it's more of a personalized experience, which I think a lot of people who are getting into solar really appreciate because there's a lot of unknowns, right? It's so new. Exactly. Mm -hmm. The consumer knows that they want to produce energy from their roof, but besides that, they don't really understand battery backup. They don't understand what size system they need. They don't understand what part of the roof they want it to go mm -hmm. on. So when a, when a customer approaches us, we're, we're handling everything, you know, from design in-house design, we're doing all the permitting. Um, we're handling the engineering drawings and all of that stuff, putting together the plan set, um, and then actually installing the, the, the solar on the roof, you know, guaranteeing with the warranties and stuff like that on the back end. Um, Brent and I were just speaking about having a, you know, a, um, a maintenance program for people. Cause I mean, solar, that could be cool. solar panels need to be washed every so often. Great way, so, great way to stay in contact with your customers. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, as, yeah. As, as many opportunities as, as we can to, to have, you know, contact with that customer and get referrals and, and, and grow the, the, the solar side of the business. Mm -hmm. Well, so what I'm curious is I don't even understand the competitive landscape of solar, sure. right? What options are there? Is it to go directly to Tesla or and go with you guys? Is that basically... 
the options go directly to the contractor or go to like a big company like Tesla? Sure. So, so when somebody contacts us with an interest in, in solar, we're doing one of two things. We're trying to qualify them for traditional rack mounted solar, which is what most people know, what you see on roofs these days, mm -hmm. you know, large rectangular modules, uh, mounted on racks up on roofs. Uh, and the game's kind of changing now too. Um, GAF has just introduced a new solar shingle, which is actually a deck mounted um, solar shingle. So it's not raised above your roof. There's no penetrating screws going into the truss system. Mm -hmm. uh, everything's nailed in. Um, just like an asphalt shingle would be. I actually brought one with me. Oh, sweet. Yeah, pull it up. So that's that's a that's a solar shingle right so this there. This is a solar shingle. Uh, it's the first nailable solar shingle in the market um, created by GAF, who's obviously known for their roofing materials. They've been in the roofing game for 138 years, I believe. So basically uh, just the section where those panels would go, that would be replaced with just a solar shingle. Correct. And then the rest would be the standard shingles. Correct. So if you yeah. think of a Tesla roof, right, that incorporates the entirety of the roof. Mm -hmm. All the electrical is actually underneath the solar um, components are all underneath the roof. Yep. Um, so in this, it'd be similar to like what you see on a traditional rack mounted solar system. You have arrays. But those arrays are tied into asphalt shingles rather than uh, screwed through the asphalt shingles and on a, a rack mounted system. OK, so it's really nice aesthetically. Um, you're not looking at bulky rectangular modules up on a roof. Um, it's really slick and the warranty is killer. Yeah. Yeah. So how how are you guys kind of identifying what 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 properties, I guess, or who would be a good fit for solar? Sh sure. So. I think everybody's a good fit for solar, yeah. to be completely honest with you. Um, right now, you know, the govern government's offering a 26% uh, federal tax credit. Dang. Um, next year, that drops down to 22%. And then in 2024, we don't know what it's going to be. It hasn't been decided yet. So, I mean, I, I think one way to look at it is you're able to lock in your energy rates. Um, mm -hmm. and as we've seen over the last year, you know, there's so many factors that can affect the cost of energy, right? You got wars that you can't control. You've got yeah. inflation, things like that. Right. And all those things affect what you pay for your utilities. And in a sense, you're able to just lock in those rates by producing energy from your roof. You, you, you're prepaying essentially for your utilities. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, one thing I, I say to my customers all the time was like, if you could have locked in your gas prices last year, rather than paying six plus dollars per gallon, if you were able to lock in those rates at four dollars, would you have done it? You know, essentially prepaid for your gas at four dollars a gallon versus paying six, six fifty, whatever it got to. Would you? And of course, people are like, yeah, of course I would. It's the same for solar. Yeah, it's a good page. What about on the hail side of things? So is it is it all right? I mean, what what's the protection there? Is it like, am I done if it gets hailed out? Like, what's the situation there? Sure. So, I mean, just like your roof, um, solar panels are covered under your homeowner's insurance. Mm -hmm. um, if they are damaged, you know, that coverage goes to whoever's insuring your house. Yeah. Um, so you have the ability to replace them. Uh, one thing Brent and I have gotten into and, and are finding a lot of success in as far as like diversifying our offering is doing solar detach and reset. Mm -hmm. um, so if, if your hail get there, sorry, if your roof gets blown out from hail and you have solar modules on your roof to be able to replace your roof, those solar modules have to be removed. Um, the racks have to be removed and then you replace the roof and then you got to come back and put all that solar back up on the roof. Um, so, so how are you using that then? So at, w at what point are you using, are you offering that to people who you're trying to close? Are you offering that? Like, what scenarios are you guys utilizing that? Cause I do like that idea. And I remember you guys talking about that. Sure. I, you know, it's, it's a B2B approach where mm. we're actually working with other roofing companies who aren't in on the solar well, side hey, of things. Here's the chance guys. So, Hey, if you guys need help with this, explain what it is and Call how me. you guys can help them for <laughs> real. Might as well. Right. You never know. Might as well yeah. Be so, so yeah. I, I think where we kind of excel is we understand um, the back and forth with the insurance companies and yeah. supplementing. Um, we've got a few former adjusters on staff who know how to run Xactimate, know how to um, how to get the most out of a, a claim, right? Mm -hmm. So if if 
if a house has been damaged by hail and it has solar modules on there, the insurance company is going to pay for that to be removed and replaced. Um, and that's where we come in. You know, we're able to provide these roofing companies with Xactimate estimates for detach and reset. We're able to make sure that, that money gets released, um, you know, and then, you know, we're, we're willing to work with these roofing companies and offer kickbacks so that if they're using us on a consistent basis, we're able to kind of scratch their backs as well. Can you do that in Austin then too, or is that just Denver or? Yeah, we're, we're building in Austin. Perfect. I think so, that's the, the end goal is to have, you know, to offer that service both here in Denver and cool. in Austin. So make sure you guys are checking them out, right? Getting, getting hold of these guys, right? Roper Roofing and Solar, if you guys need help with that, um, I think that could be a great resource for, for you guys listening out there. Now, now Brent, I want to hear your kind of side on how you're operating the business too then, because you know, you got, you got residential roofing, right? You know, you got insurance and retail, you got commercial, you got solar. D does the operation of the solar, does that fit pretty seamlessly in how you kind of operate everything else? Or is there a lot of adjustments in how you're running that? What does that look like? There's a lot more steps, you know, yeah. we, we've got the roofing dialed in, um, the solar, there's more steps. I mean, like Brad was saying, we're doing everything in house. Yeah. You know, a lot of these other roofing companies are jumping into the solar game but they're really turning around and just getting a red line price from another sub and just marking up. Exactly. You know, that's that, that, that seems to be majority. And, you know, and, that's, say, and yeah. that's not a terrible way to go either. You know, right. It, it really lessens the learning curve, which we've been through. I mean, it took us a year of training and learning the hard way to really get to where we are. So right um, off the bat, you started doing it yourself internally and just kind of took, paid the dumb tax, just kind of toughed it out. And yeah. I mean, I, I kind of, task brad with taking the role on that yeah and, um you know he's done a great job he's, he's mm -hmm. really done a good job and you know i think just like roofing i've done roofing now for 22 years there's always something new to learn i learn something new every day the solar game is changing faster than roofing you know i mean there's always going to be someone who knows a little more or something that we can learn from this person so we've we've made relationships with other solar companies too other uh other people who have more experience than us that we're able to you know, partner up with or bounce ideas off of, or, Hey, we've never done this. Can you, you know, hold our hand through this? And, uh, yeah, so far everything is cruising along and we've had really good results from the jobs we've done. So, so how, how has that benefit you being able to do the everything in, in house? Because I would say like 99% of the people I've talked to seem to be doing exactly the model you talked about where they're basically just subbing it out. Yeah. I mean, it's good. That may be a, a brag question there, but, yeah. um, you know, it's just, we have our, from start to finish, I think it's just, we're in control. You know, um, if we promise someone an estimate the next day, we're going to make sure they get it. You know, I mean, Brad can do the design. Hillary can do the design. We're not waiting on some third party to show up or, you know, if we're supposed to be at the job and some, you know, someone we're selling it out to doesn't do what they say mm -hmm. they're going to do. I mean, it just quality, we, control. quality control, yeah. hundred percent, you know, and, uh, yeah. our, you know, my name is on the company. I, yeah. I really care a lot about what people think about us. And, you know, uh, I think our roofing reputation has really helped us gain more, you know, trust from our potential solar clients, mm -hmm. you know, um, because, you know, you go on Facebook, you go on Google, you look at our reviews, 99% of them are roofing related. You know, mm. we've been doing that a lot longer, but uh, there's still a sense of trust. I think when people see that, that these are, these are good people, they're going to take care of us. They're going to do what they say they're yeah. going to do, you know, whether it be building a deck or doing a roof or whatever, you know, and uh, that's what we expect, you know, from, mm -hmm. from our team to produce on a high level. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I'll have a question for Brad in a second, but I want to ask you one more. I want to, with, with everything, I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting because now, there's no storms here, but I don't know if you've been hearing about people doing this, this new model where it's basically, you know, they have the, the, the client finance the roof, right. And then they give that bill basically to the homeowner and then they just take that to the insurance company. Have you heard about that at all? Or uh, you, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. What do you yeah, think yeah. of that? I mean, I mean, I, I don't know. I, yeah. I, I haven't learned enough about it, but, um, I think it's like anything probably depends on the insurance company that you're dealing with. Yeah, true. Some are easier to work with than others. Yeah. Uh, I think there's probably, I'm not going to mention names. There's probably a handful of them that'll tell you to pound sand. Yeah, exactly. And there's probably some that, that'll, you know, 
agree with it, but um, I don't know. I mean, I'd have to learn more to make a real educated decision mm-hmm. on that, on how to go with that. But. Yeah, especially too with it being such a weird time with it, the lack of storms. Yeah. But well, yeah. hopefully here soon, though. Hopefully here soon. Yeah, yeah. Now, I, I guess, I mean, what do you think? Do you think that you know solar could? I mean, what's your guys' vision for solar? I guess. Do you think it could be? Hey. This is just hand in hand to a, a roofing because I feel like you guys have an advantage in, in, in it's injured. The market in Colorado is a great market for solar. Great market, first, yep. right? Yeah, we have more sunshine than anywhere in the country. Yeah, you know? so, so that's that's great, right? Sure. And now you guys already have that experience. That I think a lot of people are kind of going through. Right. I mean, what's your vision for the solar? Is it like, hey, this could be the thing? You know what I mean? Is it kind of? I mean, we've probably landed a few roof jobs where they were talking to other roofers. And they wanted solar eventually. Yeah. And they wanted to make sure that they had one company that handled everything just for warranty purposes. Right. You know, so, I mean, I think that's where we really just tried to start, you know, is let's mm-hmm. just, let's just, you know, ride on these leads that we've already got from the roofing side of it and see if they want solar, you know. Um, so that's basically the pitch where it's like you get a roofing lead, try to say, hey, did you know? Sure. This is also a potential solution. Basically. Yeah, and I don't know that we've even gone through our old clients and really tried to say, "Hey, we're in the solar game now." You know, I mean, that could be a great. It's something right that we should there, do. You but I think I mean? you know, I think we're there. We've just we've been very careful as to how fast we grow. Yep. Even with the roofing side of it, I, I've I've always wanted to grow organically, slowly, not get too big why, for my why riches. Too why organic you know? growth? You, you because what you just like that? I, I like to be in control. I yeah. like to, I like I don't want to be you know keep the wheels on the track type thing. Uh, yeah, you know, it, it, I, I mean, I'll tell you, like the third year I was in business, we had a monster storm and yeah, I didn't say no to anyone, but it got it got a little overwhelming. You know, we just didn't have the systems in place. Right. And um, so I, same with solar. I just want to be sure that whenever we say we can do something, we can knock it out of the park. You know, and yeah, I, and I think we, we've gotten there with roofing and we're we're on the verge of being there with solar as well. Yeah. So. What about you? Let's, 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 let's ask the, the solar king himself. Right. <laughs> What do you think? I mean, what's your, what do you think? I mean, how do you kind of picture out, you know, maybe the next five years or so kind of playing out? Yeah. I, I mean, honestly, this new product from GAF is kind of where I see the future of solar going. Um, and you guys had to get like, what was it? Certification or they only had like a limited number? Yeah. So GAF was only looking for master elite contractors. Yep. Um, and obviously there's, you know, a lot of prerequisites to fall into to become or to becoming a master league contractor. Um, we were a master league contractor, we're a roofing and solar company. Um, so we knew both industries. Um, so we were a good fit for GAF and GAF came and actually selected us from a handful of, of roofing and solar companies mm-hmm. here in the Denver market. And, um, you know, we actually did the first retrofit GAF roof in the state of Colorado. That's pretty sweet to say, right? Yeah, that's pretty cool. And and I and I think as you know, more awareness about this product, um, you know, as as that grows, you're going to see more more and more people go to this. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's 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 a, a perfect match of roofing materials and solar materials. Um, you know, going back to like how we want to have control over. Um, the project from start to finish, you know, it, it, it goes back to, you know, a, a saying somebody told us one time that I always laugh at when I hear it, but it's, it's one hand to shake one throat to choke. Mm-hmm. So if, if, if something goes wrong, right, you call us because we installed your roof, we installed your solar, we, we did the project from start to finish. Um, and you know, our motto is, is by your side every step of the way. And that's kind of, you know, yeah, it's cool. kind of how Brent was talking about growing organically. We don't want to get too big for our britches too fast and get to a point where we're not able to, you know, to give the service, the white glove service that, that we kind of pride ourselves on. And, you know, if you go and look through our reviews, you know, it's pretty clear that within this market, um, you know, we, we excel in giving that customer um, support and I think a lot of people lack that in this industry. Mm-hmm. They get a contract, they send their subs over, they tear the roof off, they tear their garden up. Sale, they damage, sale, 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 rather sale, than, sale. And rather than execution, right? It's, rather than execution, exactly. Yeah. And I think for us, we want to, you know, going back to the original question of the future of solar, I, I, I just think that this particular product really lends itself to, you know, one crew, um, one contractor, 
one project yeah. manager. Is it simple handling. install kind of, or like so in comparison to like the panels, right? hundred I mean, percent, right? So we're in and out in two days. Dang, and that's, that's pretty nice. That's tear off, that's, yeah. you know, that's installation of the asphalt shingles, all the flashing, you know, all the vents, um, all the pipe jacks, all the solar arrays. Um, nice. And then GAF actually handles the electrical work. They come in after us, um, hook everything up to the inverter and get permission to operate and then you're producing energy from your roof. See, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So where, where's like, you know, OC or, you know, any of these other competitors, where are they at with the solar shingle? Are they, you know, if you want to take that one yeah, or whoever? Yeah. yeah I, no I, interest? How do you have no interest? I feel like- Right. It, it, I think that that will change. I think that yeah. GAF's kind of, you know, the guinea pig in this yeah. um, of the marriage of roofing and solar. I know that they have some patents on the product, so I don't know how accessible it is for other people to get into it ah, currently. So they might be starting from scratch. I think they got man. first mover advantage, um, you know, and I think maybe some of these other oh, you yeah. know companies are kind of sitting on the sideline right now, seeing how it goes and seeing what kind of market share that the GAF is going to steal away from traditional mm -hmm. rack mounted solar. It must be something like that patent's got to be a big part of it, too, because I remember so have, like Milwaukee has got a gym that's named after one of the lawsuits against Makita. You know what I sure. mean? Where it's like maybe they just pay it, but I'm guessing it's got to be something with the patents being. Yeah, I mean, you, know. you, you, you create an, a competitive advantage by being the first mover and, you know, having the intellectual property of, of a nailable mm -hmm. solar shingle, you know. And like I said, I imagine. The market is so huge that that these companies, Owens Corning, Malarkey, companies mm -hmm. like that, have to be sitting on the sidelines, looking at this as a possible opportunity. So I would imagine, you know, GAF won't be the only person doing this in the future. Mm -hmm. So I mean, is it basically is just like an assessment, or what do you guys consultation? Uh, you know, there's inspections for roofs. What is it with solar? Is it basically just getting? Yeah. So so there's a design process that goes yeah. in, right? And all that's done, you know, through satellite imagery and how to maximize basically where the panels exactly. go. Exactly. So yeah. when we go in and do a design, we're basically using um, Open Solar or Aurora to yeah. do our design work. We're able to see, you know, from satellite imagery where they're shading on the roof, what roof facets are the best for solar. Uh, we can see what penetrations are up there and, and where we need to design the arrays and put the arrays to get the most output. Mm -hmm. um, but essentially what we're doing is we're matching up customers' uh, electricity bills. And the goal, if we can, is to try to get them to 100% offset. So essentially what we're doing is we're eliminating their power bill um completely that's pretty cool yeah so mm -hmm. the idea being you know instead of paying you know let's say 200 dollars a month right you're prepaying or you're financing right if let's say your power bill is 200 dollars a month but i'm able to finance a solar system for you at 100 bucks a month mm -hmm. right so you're now paying a hundred bucks a month rather than 200 bucks a month. And once that's paid off, then your energy is essentially free, right? Mm -hmm. Your roof is producing, your roof is a power plant mm -hmm. essentially. All right. Well, it's so now I got just, I just want to hear some, you know, what you guys have learned or you said you've always been learning. So let's dive, you know, the last, let's say year and a half, right? It's been some interesting times, you know what I mean? What would you say in the space? It could be either roofing, solar, business. I want to hear from both of you guys. I mean, what, what are some takeaways that you guys have just kind of taken? I mean, because it's been interesting. Supply shortages, there's been lockdowns, there's, you know, there, no hit, you know, what, yeah. He's like, hey, I got, I got something to share. Trust me, I've learned a thing or two. I'm no, like, I feel that. Well, no. uh, I mean, I've shifted in my career as far, you know, I, I started out selling roofs, like, like yeah. you know, and, and now I'm trying to learn how to be an owner. So, yeah. um, and trying to learn how to be an owner. Uh, I, I feel like I work for my team, right? So I've got, you know, 12 salespeople out there and I'm trying to give them more than just, sh you know, shingles to sell. Now we can sell GAF solar. Now we can sell rack mounted solar, you know, now we can sell Duralast or we can sell whatever you equipping know. your team. Yeah. So giving them yeah. more, more to offer, you know, and, and yeah. there's some, some of the team that's more focused on solar and there's some that's more focused on roofing and, uh, some more commercial, some more residential. So, you know, I, I try to, you know, go through the leads as they come in, send them to the, the person who I think can handle it properly. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for me, it's just been learning in general as far as just how to, how to support my team. Mm -hmm. um, through these times, uh, you know, I, I've talked to some other roofers about, you know, 
the lack of hailstorms and how it's, it's been tough, you know, and um, so I'm just constantly trying to figure out a way to generate more leads, generate more opportunities so that, you know, I, I talked about a foundation earlier, um, having a, a really, really solid foundation so that we can capitalize on the next storm event, you know, and we all know mm-hmm. it's coming at some yeah, point. It exactly. may not be this year. It may not be next year, but we will. Eventually it's going to happen. And so just trying to keep, you know, the team intact, everyone fed, everyone's family's taken yeah. care of. And, and, you know, that's, it's been a challenge, but that's, um, that's something that I think I take pride in. Yeah. hundred percent. And I mean, like you said, it can pray. It's like, as a leader, how can I make sure no matter what the situation is that my team has all the resources possible to be successful. Right. Sure. And, and, sure. and that's exactly what you're doing. And so, I mean, when you're a leader and, you know, business is good, life is easy. But when, yep. you know, there's certain circumstances that make it a little more difficult, you got to start getting creative. So it's like, remember, you you have to be able to adapt, pivot, you know what I mean? And obviously be rash with your decisions, right? Think them through, but you got to do something. Sure. You know what I mean? You have to yeah. like, if, it, if what, you know, if, if you're hitting a situation where most of your work was insurance, you know, retail groups or whatever it is, well, I mean, not insurance, uh, residential roofs, then you got to think of something else. You know what I mean? And I mean, I think that what you'd mentioned too, with, uh, we should probably hit up your other customers, dude. You know what I mean? Just yeah, that yeah. customer list, hit them yeah. up and be like, yo, Hey, we're offering solar. You guys want to just, you know, see what we can do for you. I mean, stuff like that's yeah. great too, but that's, that's good stuff. hundred percent. What about you? Yeah, I, w- I would say, you know, being proactive rather than reactive, Yeah, you know, understanding that there's going to be lulls in storms, you mm-hmm. know, and if, if your business is 100 percent. Sorry about that mess. Oh, you're you're good. If, if your business is 100 percent focused. See, on- look at this. He just put it. He's making sure that his team is oh, positioned for success. You see this? The, the, the leader does the dirty work. You know what I mean? <laughs> exactly. You know, and, oh, I, I do have one quote I had actually on on, uh, on uh, coaching too as, as a, a leader, right? So great coaches lie awake at night thinking about how they can make you better. They relish creating an environment where you can make more out of yourself. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's what it's all about, right? Sure. But yeah. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you know, giving like brent said making sure that our salespeople have the tools um to be successful mm-hmm. and knowing that you know if 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 there isn't storm if there aren't storms and there isn't hail that we have the ability to succeed and you know i mean i i, I don't know how many roofing companies have gone out of business over the last three years because there hasn't been hail it's it gotta be a decent amount it's gotta be a yeah. decent amount right you know so I think diversifying your offering so that you are able to stay afloat when, when the hail dries up, um, you know, and, and I think when I first started with this company about three years ago, we were pretty much residential hail focused, mm-hmm. right? We, we had made a lot of really good relationships with insurance agents. Um, we were getting referred a lot of work and I heard great stories about huge hailstorms. Uh, and then I started working and, and Brent oversold you on that one. Yeah, maybe, maybe, it maybe. went from five years of amazing storms, I think to like nothing. Exactly. So, um, you know, I think that we've, we've branched out, you know, and, and, and now we're doing a lot more commercial work, obviously the solar we've spoken a lot about today, but like, you know, having several irons in the fire that, mm-hmm. you know, that can generate business and revenue is, is important, you know, yep. um, and being proactive, like I said, you know, like preparing for those long droughts of, of no hail and knowing that, yeah. hey, we're going to be able to, you know, pay for our overhead um, and and hopefully keep, like Brent said, our, our, our sales guys fed, make sure that they're taken care of and they want to stay and continue working for us and they they're not out looking for other jobs because our sole focus is is on the insurance game and there's no insurance work. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. So, you know, expanding our portfolio and our offerings so that that we are able to, you know, stay afloat and then when the when the hail does come, amen, cherry on top. Let's yeah, go. Let's, let's make it rain. Ride. Yeah. Exactly. And it's much easier to be reactive than proactive, right? And it it seems to be, you know, you learn by having to be reactive, right? You have a down month or you have a rough stretch and then you, you know, Hey, not going to do that again. Right. So I I think two is part of that being proactive is, you know, I I know I've seen some people, it's interesting. I saw some people cut back on whether it's sale or like any kind of like maybe business development or marketing and stuff like that, especially with the economy. But then I've seen people who've been in business for a hundred years 
who weren't even doing any marketing who all of a sudden are now doing marketing because they're like, well, we have to actually get to work now. Right. So that, that just kind of shows you it's like you know, during those tough times, be more aggressive. Sure. Right. Be more pro. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. I mean, I think I've stepped up our marketing even this morning. Yeah. I, I, was, I spoke with three other lead producing yep. companies, you know, and um, yeah. So like I was saying earlier, my, my profits over the last few years, what I'm personally taking home have gone down significantly, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, but as, as a company, we've we've grown and continued to grow mm -hmm. um, to where I think the foundation's solid again. So we and will. that's the ride you kind of sign up for. You know what it I is. mean? It is. It is. Just because I've I've heard yeah. that from a lot of other owners as well. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I I've talked to several as well, and it's I think there's two strategies. One is just to, you know, curl up and not know what to do and say, well, I'm going to hold on to all save the money, the money have, save the and, money, you know, save like that. Like, yeah, exactly. But I, as a long-term strategy, that doesn't make sense to me. You know, I, I don't think I would have half or even less of our sales team in place right now. If, if I, yeah. did that, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, I tell you, we've got a, just a fantastic team of, of people. There's a yeah, great team, great just, culture. The culture is awesome. I mean, there's mm -hmm. some of my best friends in the world. We all, yep hang out we all get along it's it's really solid i'm just i'm super grateful for mm -hmm. the people we have absolutely yeah office. and you so. guys are crushing it too so nice work i, pre I appreciate working we'll with try. you guys and just talking hanging yeah. out with you guys hey, you guys so. have been fantastic to work with too and a big part of where we are mm -hmm. so yeah sure. if you Cheers want to talk to like one of the chillest leaders that's probably gotta be brent roper you is <laughs> <laughs> like let's be for real just chill dude to hang out with good stuff so all right well we're gonna go we're gonna roll into the game and then we'll, we'll, we'll kind of call it so Oh, hey there. You come here often? <laughs> I feel like I see you every Wednesday. And, you know, you, you definitely caught my eye. I'll tell you one thing. You know how to stand out from a crowd. You already got a lot of great things going for you. I mean, I see your company. I see what you got going on. I want to be part of it. You know, how, how about I give you my number and you, you send me a text? 720 seven nine six four nine three five hey yeah it's nick right peakleads.io i think i think we can help you generate some commercial roofing leads looking forward to chatting talk soon all right so now we have the the final segment of the show this is where I got to move my monitor here, make sure that Roper, I'm gonna turn down the brightness. You know, I, I can't make sure that, that Brent's not cheating here. We're gonna be playing who wants to be a roofing millionaire, okay? Right. Now, this isn't just roofing trivia. I'm just asking roofers, that's why it's that. It's gonna be trivia that's based off of things I know about you guys, okay? So there's gonna be five questions. All right, you got two lifelines. Get over here. I'm, I see your eyes. I'm, I'm already sketched out. I'm already sketched out by this one. All right, so uh, then you got two lifelines. You got 50-50, okay, which will remove two of the wrong answers, leaving you with a 50% chance of getting the answer right, okay? And then the second one is phone a friend. But if you call them and they don't pick up, you're done. All right, you lose the lifeline. So think about people that answer if you do utilize that. All right. <laughs> I didn't sign up for this. So the the first one is a Georgia Bulldog question. All right. So the Bulldogs beat Bama. Is this me versus Brent? Or? No, this is you guys are a team. Uh, so this is the, you guys you guys get to to okay. team up. All right uh, here. Yeah, yeah. So you guys beat Bama thirty three to eighteen to win the two thousand twenty two college football playoff national championship. The oh, team yeah. was loaded. Right now. How many players were drafted in the first round in the NFL draft from Georgia? Is it A, five players, B, three players, C, nine players, or D, one player? I'll take that. It was five. Ooh, we made it easy. There wasn't even a thought. That is correct. It was A, five players. So Georgia broke the record NFL draft for the modern uh, with 15 players selected in the 2022 draft overall. And I think with, of that five, they were all defenders as well. I, right? They in might the first round. Yeah. In the first round, you're actually right. Yeah. So they wanted a that couple defense. other defenders who should have been first rounders. One got in some trouble. The other one. Yeah, Kobe Dean, Dean, right? The Kobe Dean. Yeah, the Kobe Dean. Dean might, he, they're saying that he might be the steal of the draft. I agree. So, yeah, nice, nice job. All right. So now. We got a, a solar question, all right? 2021. <laughs> so this trip, this is going to be tough. This one's going to be one of those where it's like, you know, it, 
I, I hit some hard ones here. Okay. 2021 was the best year for residential solar uh, in the U.S., where multiple records were broken, including the largest numbers of installations in a single year. How many PV systems were installed? Nationwide? Yep. Is it A, 79,000, B, 374,000, C, 514,000, or D, 1.2 million? Uh, I'd like to use a lifeline. All right. What lifeline do we want? Do you want 50, 50, 50, 50. All right. We're going to be using the 50, 50. All right. You now have two answers eliminated, leaving you with two potential right answers. B 374,000 or C 514,000. I'm going to go C 514,000. That's right. Two for two, 514,000 business is booming in solar. All right. Now we got Rent Roper has got a spot in Winter Park. Okay. So as one of Colorado's oldest resorts, Winter Park Resort was initially named something else in 1940. The resort remained under control of the city of Denver until it was sold in 2002, at which time its name changed to Winter Park. What was the previous name? Is it A, West Portal, B, Unique Terrain Resort, C, Grand County Park, or D, Eagle Wind Resort? <laughs> oh, no idea on this one. Uh, I may need to phone a friend. Phone All right, phone a friend, but put it on speaker and get it next to the microphone. Oh, Remember, if they don't, an, like if, they, if they don't answer, you will be. Uh, uh, you I'm will be. If she does answer, it's going to be a, a long conversation. Uh, yeah, she, she's my cousin, and we haven't talked in a while. <laughs> oh uh, man, I don't know. You got to decide if it's worth the call. Then you know what I mean. I, I'm pretty sure it's Grand County. Grand County. Is that we're going to go with? So good about that. Yeah. yeah. Is that your final answer? You don't want to use the lifeline. I mean, how many how many misses do we get here? So well, as you gives me unbelievable. But as many misses as you want. But I mean, oh, okay. you know, let's let's get. I mean, you don't really have a million dollars to pay us. Well, anyway. I might. <laughs> okay. I might. And right. maybe I did. Maybe, maybe you're maybe. not going to get it now. Okay. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, then let's go with Grand County. All right. So we're going to go with C. Grand County Park. Should have used the lifeline. Eagle Wind. It was A. West Portal. Oh, no, the, the other one. three I made up. So I actually spent <laughs> like ten minutes on Unique Terrain Resort. I thought that West was Portal. decent. Eagle County Park in Eagle Wind Resort. I found okay. random words okay. that were correlated somehow and and made you're, those. you're a sneaky one i'm a sneaky one so i got you there all right so now we're going to go back to a georgia alumni one another one that's gonna be tough here but nick chubb is an absolute superstar in the nfl right he is an animal he was an animal's freshman year at georgia averaging 7.1 yards per carry all right now the browns running back recently posted a video of him doing squats what do you think this dude's pr is okay. is it a 1025 pounds b 475 pounds c 375 pounds or d 675 pounds i'm gonna say 675. what are you saying i saw the video but I, I, you saw the video oh i do not know how much he was lifting or i can't remember yeah uh it might be i don't know i can't remember what was the higher choice obviously i'm not a weight so, so i don't know but do you uh, so the two highest was 1025 pounds and 675 pounds this is just one squat one squat he might be able to do a yeah. thousand he's I a beast a mm. i think it's 675 though. which one are you gonna go with though then gents by that mm, you just made i think 675 yeah but which one are you gonna pick 675 and that's correct looks like i gave it away there it's 675 pounds that dude is an absolute animal i'd hate to have to tackle him he's a good dude too one of my yeah he's teams. a great yeah. yeah and i've had him on my my fantasy team for like our he's big just, one for three years in a row he's dude. a very so humble, very humble uh, oh yeah player you know for his stature uh, i actually I, I saw him uh in front of the sec championship i went to the sec yeah. championship oh, nice. game uh last year and he was coming down the escalator and i was standing in front of the escalator waiting for a friend yeah and saw him and was like Chubb and dapped him oh, before the game. Yeah, so my, yeah, my claim to fame. Let's go. It's pretty sweet, dude. I love it, man. All right. Well, the, this next one is so. You, like I said, Brent's like a super, super good golfer, par golfer. So That's we got a golf true. question here. Okay. So a guy named Mike Austin is credited by Guinness World Records with hitting the longest drive in tournament play with 515 yards in 1974 at Winterwood Golf Course in Las Vegas, Nevada. How far did he hit the ball? Is it A, 
610 yards, B, 515 yards, C, 399 yards, or D, 444 yards? Kind of a confusing question. Um, what's, what's the confusion? I can, I, can, I can give you the clarity you, that you, you like. You said he hit the ball 500 and something yards to be. Oh, so wow. Go so, five, look at that. <laughs> I'm pretty God, sure you just gave us dude. the answer. You see, you see, you see what happens here. I just gave the the. Yeah. That is a very confusing, you know. And then I asked him, but I don't, I don't understand what the confusion was. So I, I see. So it looks yeah. like I got boinked on that. I mean, one. I, I thought it might I'm be a trick. Take, I'm gonna have to take <laughs> a big L on that I one. I thought it might be a trick question. But, Damn it! Uh, no. All right. So it looks like you guys were four for five with me giving you one of the answers. All right. So All right. because of that, I got you guys a gift here. That's what we got. The million dollar T-shirt. Oh yeah. All right. Pull them up, Vince. I got you guys here. Sweet. Here we go. Pull Thank them up. You. Thanks, sir. Let's see what you got. I like big roofs and I cannot lie. What is it? What do you guys got? Come on. What do you guys got? Give it to me. Give it to me. Commercial roofing radio. Uh, commercial roofing radio. I like big roofs and I cannot lie. Ooh, ooh. Oh, oh maybe no, dance a little bit. Deny. Come on. Maybe I want to make a TikTok out of this. You know what I mean? Let's see what you got. Boom, boom, boom. Come on. What you guys got? There we go. Love it, guys. Well, hey, as we close out, leave the viewers with one thing you want to, you know, it could be a quote, a book suggestion, some kind of positive vibe. So you give these guys something positive you want to end it on, and we're going to close out. We're going to be done. You got something, Brad? Um, go dogs. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go dogs and, uh, you know, go Avalanche. Go, go Avs. I mean, three of go my, favorite, sports. Three of my sports. favorite teams all won it all this year. You oh, know? so you're living good we're, we're, right we now, We were in man. a drought for 41 years. And, <laughs> yeah. And look at us go. So, uh, no, cheers. So cheers there's always you. a chance you can win. Just keep showing up. Yeah. And eventually no matter you how get bad your team is, you always got it. You know, yeah. You always got a chance. So uh, no matter how bad your team is, stick to them. Stick keep cheering for them because one day. One day you're going to get that championship. And sometimes it could be all the teams at once. Absolutely. So you never know how close you are. So keep trucking, man. Keep, keep cheering those people on. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, thanks, guys, for joining me. Appreciate it. Yeah, bud. Cheers. Thanks for having us.